what was it, 98? It was 98. And we worked for two years before that. That's right. So we've been knowing each other 20 years. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 people Oprah made famous. They did my hair that day, and I wore fancy dresses, and I go out and I'm like, Oprah's in jeans, and I look like I'm an Oprah stalker. <laughs> for this list, we'll be looking at some of the human beings whose careers were launched or majorly boosted by none other than media mogul Oprah Winfrey. So, who are your favourite Oprah regulars? We'd love to hear your picks in the comments below. Number 10. Ian Levanzant Ian Levanzant is a spiritual mentor, life coach and author who regularly appeared on The Oprah Winfrey Show. In fact, she appeared on the show 20 times between 1998 and 1999 alone to give no-nonsense relationship advice to Oprah's viewers. You don't have to do nothing to love. So when you get somebody and you got to start fixing them, understand that you're in your lust. You are out of your mind and wow. you have to go back in. You are good, girl. <laughs> but Van Zandt's journey to Oprah-related fame had a bit of a bump in the road, since she and the talk show host had a falling out in 1999, which they famously mended in an episode of Oprah's show in 2011. I thought you wanted the work. I didn't think you wanted me. Oh, my God. I got it. I got it. I got it. Afterwards, Van Zandt went on to host her own show on Oprah's network, OWN, called Ianla Fix My Life from 2012 to 2021. Now that the show's over, there's no telling what Van Zandt might do next, especially with Oprah in her corner. You still have what it takes. Your trajectory from this point forward will be straight up. Number 9. Rhonda Byrne Oprah has boosted a lot of authors' careers through her book club. And one of the greatest pleasures I have right now in life is to be reading a really good book and to know I have a really, really good book after that book to read. Chris Bojalian credits his subsequent burst in popularity as an author to Winfrey after his book Midwives was selected for inclusion. But one author stands out from the crowd. Rhonda Byrne, author of The Secrets, the self-help book that brought the law of attraction into the mainstream. The Secret has sold 30 million copies and grossed over $300 million. Turns out Oprah had a hand in making this philosophy popular by bringing Byrne onto her show and publicly supporting the book's claims that positive thinking can make your dreams come true. People would often say, well, sure, Oprah, look at your life. You have a lot to be grateful for. Look yeah. at mine. The truth is you okay. got here by because being that before, that. Right. not right. now. This is, the effect, this is the effect, not the Form cause. Form follows consciousness. Yeah. Right. Whether or not you agree with the secrets, it's clear that Oprah helped Byrne attract wealth and fame. That like attracts like and what we do is we attract into our lives the things that we want. Number 8 Bob Green Bob Green is a personal trainer who was frequently on The Oprah Winfrey Show to give millions of viewers fitness advice. No one drops a good amount of weight and has this success after five years without changing their love life, that's an example, uh, their financial situation, how they view themselves. It's always a core belief about yourself that's changed in the people that are successful. Since the show ended, he served as a columnist for O, oh, the Oprah magazine. He's written a bunch of books about health and wellness, two of which were co-written by Oprah herself. Most interestingly, though, he has a product line called Best Life Foods, which produces butter alternatives. It does make a certain amount of sense that the woman, who famously proclaimed that she loves bread, would team up with the butter alternative guy. Everyone is an emotional eater. It's to what degree uh, do you do that? Yeah. And it's a matter of controlling that behavior. Off screen, Green's friendship with Oprah actually runs deep. She was the best woman at his wedding. He does have her to thank for his fame, after all. He feels like a big brother to me, even though I think I'm older. I think so, but we'll... I just... <laughs> well, I'm barely... Barely. Oh, barely. It's barely. close. Barely. Number 7. James Fry 
Perhaps the most famous or infamous author from Oprah's book club is James Fry. The expectations and rules and conventions of the literary community or the publishing community or society in general mean absolutely nothing to me. What means something to me is telling a story in the way I think is the right way to do it. Fry wrote A Million Little Pieces, which was originally billed as a memoir but was later very publicly revealed to be semi-fictional. The so-called memoir was the September 2005 book club pick and became a bestseller shortly after. But in January 2006, Fry appeared on Oprah's show where he was questioned until he admitted that several parts of his tale were straight up made up. In this corner there's Oprah. In this corner we've got James Fry to defend himself. I don't know why he's there, but he's there trying to defend himself. Good luck, James Fry. Still, Fry's work had enough cultural relevance for director Sam Taylor Johnson to turn a million little pieces into a 2018 movie, starring her husband, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Plus, Bright Shiny Morning, the actual novel Fry published in 2008, was a bestseller too, despite, or maybe because of, the Oprah controversy. The Million Little P Pieces controversy really freed me to, to be as radical as I want, to break every rule I want, and to not have to care what other people thought. It was great. Number six, Nate Berkus. Nate Berkus is a big name in the world of interior design, and he got his first taste of fame on Oprah's talk show stage. When you start out with a dresser in a bedroom and it's a long horizontal piece, it's best to anchor it with something so that there's some symmetry. And I always like to use a pair of lamps to do that. He was often featured on the show doing segments about home makeovers and interior design tips. After making a name for himself among Oprah's viewers, Berkus hosted his own talk show, The Nate Berkus Show, for two seasons. Sociology student, <laughs> it works it. for design. <laughs> Believe me, it ben. works in real estate, it works in design every day. He now co-hosts Nate and Jeremiah by Design on TLC with his husband, Jeremiah Brent. He's also published a best-selling book and has designed several collections of home goods for retailers like Target, Joe and Fabric and Craft Stores and more. What a difference a rug makes. It's probably the largest expanse that you have in the home other than paint color and I actually think it's a lot easier than painting. Number 5. Susie Ullman Another person Oprah introduced to her large audience is Susie Ullman financial advisor extraordinaire. Each and every one of you has to have your own personal financial stimulus action plan, and that's what today is all about. After appearing on The Oprah Winfrey Show about 29 times to give advice about money and personal finance, Allman went on to host her own show on CNBC, write several best-selling books, and start her own podcast. She's also been a featured guest on countless shows, including The View, Today, and, oddly enough, The Simpsons. You are not allowed to buy a Mercedes until you pay off your credit cards. Great. Now you tell me. The Emmy-winning finance expert isn't slowing down anytime soon either, as she continues to provide resources to help people educate themselves about money. It definitely makes sense that people want to take advice from an advisor handpicked by the famously wealthy Winfrey. So it looks like all of the numbers are adding up. So if I'm going to give you a verdict, it is you have been approved, boyfriend, because oh, wow. you have the money to do so. Number four, Rachel Ray. That's why I call it, hey, orange you glad it's Thanksgiving soup? <laughs> uh, I kill me. When you think of Rachel Ray, you might think about the yummy 30-minute meals she's known for, or maybe her many cookbooks, or her magazine, or even her line of dog food. But this culinary queen got a huge boost from Oprah. Yeah, you have such a great personality. That's why you're Thank such you. a hit. People like you. Yes. I It's because I'm not a pro. They see me uh, chopping yeah. the onion wrong and yes. I make a big mess. While she'd already been featured on the Food Network, being featured on the Oprah Winfrey show helped her add to her growing fan base. And launching her daytime show led to a whole new level of fame made possible by Winfrey and her team, Harpo Productions. For five years, I've been on Food Network 
national television talking to vegetables. <laughs> That's, those have been my little special friends over the years. I am so excited that we have people here. I'm just beside myself. And it's certainly been successful, as it's been on air for over 15 years and has won multiple daytime Emmys. Number three, Gail King. Oprah's personal relationships often make their way into the spotlight, like her longtime romantic partner, Stedman Graham. But it's Oprah's best friend, Gail King, who takes this spot on this list. Love, blessings, kissy kissy. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had no idea technology could be so much fun. Oprah and Gail's friendship goes way back. The two women met in their early 20s when they were working at a Baltimore television station and have supported each other throughout their decades-long friendship. Gail has been a broadcast news anchor in cities like Washington, D.C. and Hartford, Connecticut, and is now a co-host on CBS This Morning. I think it's an awesome, awesome job. I think it's a lot of, it's a privilege, but it's a great responsibility. And I don't take it lightly. I love being here with yeah. you guys. During her years as a regional anchor, though, she made appearances on Oprah's show, giving her plenty of opportunities to help introduce her to a national audience. When are you going to let go? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, Dr. Oz. Known as America's doctor, Dr. Mehmet Oz is another graduate of the Oprah Winfrey Show. Okay. This organ literally pumps chemicals into your body, and it holds the secrets. There's much of what you have to understand. Where is it? Where, where, where is it in your body? It's actually hooked up to your stomach, but I did better. I brought you some. After offering health advice in over 60 appearances on the show, Dr. Oz got his own talk show in 2009, produced by Oprah's company, Harpo. But Oz's influence goes way beyond TV. He has a magazine and several best-selling books, not to mention that he held the title of professor at Columbia University until 2022 and for a long time continued to see patients even as a rising TV star. Oz's latest venture, though, politics. During Trump's presidency, the good doctor was appointed to the Council on Sports, Fitness and Nutrition. In late 2021, Dr. Oz announced he would run for a Senate seat in Pennsylvania, while his show aired its last episode in January of the following year. America's doctor, indeed. Turns out, turns out running for Senate is the one weird trick to reduce belly fat. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Dr. Phil If Dr. Oz is America's doctor, then Dr. Phil, real name Phil McGraw, is America's therapist. In the beginning, when Phil would come on, we decided that he would come on the shows on Tuesdays. And I love Tuesdays. Remember I used to say, I'm so glad you're here. I can leave my brain at home. <laughs> it was fantastic. One of the reasons he takes this spot is because his eponymous talk show has been on the air since 2002. Not quite as long as the Oprah Winfrey show was on the air, but still impressive. Indeed, it was his multiple appearances on her show in the late 90s that launched him into everlasting fame. You've got to take some time to start saying, what is it my partner needs and what can I do to create some value there for my partner? Today, Dr. Phil, who's written six New York Times bestsellers, is still a household name. Dr. Phil's advice show, which has been nominated for several daytime Emmys, has been so successful that McGraw actually stopped renewing his license to practice psychology in 2006, though his doctorate in clinical psychology technically warrants his continued use of the doctor title. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.